future of education is in the balance and to help us understand the new landscape is 4J Superintendent Dr. Gustavo Balderas. We sure appreciate you being here with us tonight. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Well, a recent article says that more parents might be considering homeschooling now that they've given it a try. Do you think that's going to be a growing trend? No, I hope not because again, I think kids and having our teachers are, you know, we have 2,700 employees in 4J. We have a lot of great teachers. I want our kids to get back in our brick and mortar with our curriculum, a viable curriculum. I think that's what the best place for kids. Again, it's parental choice uh, and, and I honor parental choice, but I want our kids back in our brick and mortars. Our teachers want our kids back. I think the majority of our parents want our kids back. And again, I know I want our kids back. With that said, will some kids be able to continue with online learning instead of returning, as you said, to the brick and mortar to a traditional classroom? Yeah. It's a great question, Matt. And I think one of the questions for us is where are we gonna be at in in the fall? And we're looking at a lot of contingency plans. We're looking at, uh, are we fully open, fully closed or a hybrid approach? I think right now the hybrid approach is something that we're really looking at because there's gonna be some parents that aren't gonna wanna send their kids to a brick and mortar without a vaccine or medicine. And I absolutely understand that. So being able to provide options for families is something we're, we're, we, we will be doing in 4J. What is the current concern right now for the budget? Are schools going to need to scale back on certain operations when they do reopen? Yeah, so the governor, you know, came out with a budget of a, a budget reduction of about $3 billion, and that's a $17.5 million reduction next calendar year for 4J. That's a huge hit for that budget. And we were, again, three months ago, we we're looking at a 13.5% million increase with the student investment account through the corporate activity tax. So it's a $31 million swing in one year. So we're, look, we're gonna look at, at under every stone, we're gonna de leave no doors unlocked with the, with the North Stars at having a full calendar year for our kids and, Harry, and also having every employee currently employed still working for us. So again, no, uh, we, we, we hope no furloughs and no staff reductions. Those are our North Stars. And again, but again, we are 17 and a half million is hard to make up. A lot. Yeah, well, I guess let's talk about it. How do you plan to make up for budget shortfalls? Would it be maybe a little bit at a time over the course of four to five years or all in one big chunk? Are there talks of furloughs? You know, we haven't had that discussion with our association, but again, we're going to leave uh, no, stone, no stone unturned. I think what's going to happen, this is a multi-year issue. I worry about next year, but I worry about a year two and three. If, if it's three billion, it's 17 and a half million next year, roughly 16 million in the second year and 12 and a half million in the third year. So we're talking many millions of cuts over the next three years. Talk to us about your team at 4J and talk to us about how they were able to dig down, make this work and probably prove that in the future, should difficult circumstances come along, you'll be able to do it again. You know, we have a great staff our teachers are phenomenal, classified are phenomenal, and we rose to the executive order of, you know, Matt, and we're we're providing roughly 30,000 meals a week to our families right now, to our kids, 30,000 meals a week. We're providing emergency childcare for our uh, emergency workers at two sites, and we quickly pivoted to distance learning. And to your point, I think this is a model. This is, you know, with every crisis, there's always opportunity because you're, there's, there's, there's ways to grow as a system. And for us to be able to use this model in the future, for example, for inclement weather days, if we have them for our students to not have to make up in June, which are which are tough days to make up for all folks. But uh, again, this is an opportunity for us to look at this, mod, at this mode of education and can we expand on it for future uses? And I absolutely believe that we can do that. I think this is gonna be something that we're looking at right now uh, for to increase our Eugene Online Academy that we have already to really focus next year, we're gonna open up a K-5, we we're, we're already scheduled to open up a K-5 component to our Eugene Online Academy. And I think we're only gonna expand. Yeah, we're all learning how to get through this together and certainly there's gonna be good that comes out of this. So thank you so much, Dr. Gustavo Balderas for joining us tonight. We sure do appreciate it. Thank you, Renee. Thanks, Matt.